All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar on how to engage employees uh, during the great resignation. Just a few housekeeping items to cover. Everyone's lines will be on mute um, and your cameras will be off. Feel free to place any questions in the Q&A box. And if you have any technical difficulties, feel free to submit those in the chat through us. This webinar will be recorded and we will send out to you in a follow-up email so you can look for that. And today we have a lineup of incredible speakers for you. Scott Jackson, President and CEO of Global Impact. Sara Lomelin with Philanthropy Together. Dennis Haramilo, who's the leader of the Cisco's Latinx ERG and Giving Circle. We have myself, Brittany Craig, uh, Managing Director at Global Impact. Marcy Passarella, Director of Global Citizenship at PepsiCo. And Emily Rasmussen from Grapevine. So I'm going to kick things over to Scott to get us started. Thank you, Brittany and everyone coming off mute. Uh, you know, we uh, when we first started planning and set the date for this webinar, we had no idea actually what was going to be going on in the world um, and the context that we would have for this conversation. Our thoughts are really with the people affected by violence in Ukraine today. And we wanna thank all of our partners, including our panelists who are all working to help those in need in Ukraine and the surrounding countries. Uh, later in this discussion, uh, Brittany can share some of the resources of how to get involved and support the efforts with a number of our nonprofit partners that are, that are working on the front lines there. What we did know when we did the planning for this webinar was that the workforce here in the United States and really globally is facing one of the most challenging times to engage um, and that employers are working hard to kind of really identify how they can best meet employees where they are. And so making it really more important than ever to dig into your employee engagement strategies and ways in which you can engage your employees. Today, we're gonna to highlight two programs, which I think are really powerful. Uh, with Cisco and PepsiCo that take unique approaches in increasing engagement. They'll be joined by their partners at Philanthropy Together and Global Impact who make these programs uh, work and implement. Um, and there are really three key components that both of these uh, signature programs have in common. One of them is to really be able to increase the diversity of their employee engagement program. The second is to build community within the workplace but also uh, outside of the workplace with surrounding communities. And finally, to build community within uh, the, the, the greater corporation and boosting participation, involvement, and satisfaction uh, with their company and, and, and really uh, deepening that sense of why they work uh, for a corporation. Our mission at Global Impact is to inspire greater giving, and we hope to inspire you today. With that, I wanna introduce our first set of speakers who are inspirational to me. Sara Lomelin, who is the president of Philanthropy Together and Dennis Jaramillo, who leads the Latinx Employee Resource Group and Giving Circle at Cisco. And we're so lucky to have you both. I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you, Scott. Um, I am so happy to be here with all of you today and to be with my friend, Dennis. Uh, who I have met, I, you know, we have been friends for a few years um, and working five years and working on this um, giving circles together. So I just want to go quickly in, in a little bit of uh, who am I, who is Philanthropy Together, what do we do, what is a giving circle, et cetera, et cetera. So Philanthropy Together, our mission is to democratize and diversify philanthropy through the power of giving circles. Uh, next slide, please. We really believe that everyone is a philanthropist. Everyone can be a philanthropist. So what, why do we think this? Right now, there are many challenges that our world is facing, right? Wealth concentration, isolation, missing voices, anonymity, polarization, missing data. And our, you know, by, um, uh, getting people together, next slide, please. Um, we believe that we can fix all these challenges. 
what do you see here? You see people, people power philanthropy. What we're about to talk today is the solution of those immense problems, right? Um, it's just the million of people that are feeling isolated and polarized and not connected to the different causes that they care about during these times. So the people in this photo are just, you know, a few of the folks that we have been able to engage, you know, in the past couple of years uh, with Giving Circles. Next slide, please. And through Giving Circles, we see how those challenges that I started talking about can shift, right? Wealth concentration can shift into wealth abundance, isolation into community, missing voices to representative philanthropy, anonymity to accountability, polarization to shared values, and missing data to aggregated impact. Um, next slide, please. But you may be thinking, what is a given circle, right? Please start from the beginning. And I love this definition uh, from our friends at Amplifier, a network of uh, Jewish-based uh, giving circles. Giving circle takes your mind, talents, and financial abilities seriously and makes giving a collaborative social experience. So what do you need to have a giving circle? You need a group of people that gathers, that group of people discuss their vision, their shared values, and how they want to, to make impact in their community. They decide together to pull their funds, their time, their talent, and they give the pool donation together, having a, a stronger impact into the community. And most important than everything else, they engage beyond the financial gift as volunteers, as board members, as, you know, elevating the messaging for the different nonprofits and, and initiatives that they want to support. Next slide, please. So how is this relevant to you in your company? And I just want to make a pause. Can people hear me okay? Because I'm hearing a lot of noise. Can people hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, giving circles within companies, right? You may be thinking, mm, what does that have to do with me? So for companies, giving circles can provide value at the intersection of these three issues, the employee experience, your business objectives, and community impact. Giving circles inside corporations build employee power and unity, amplify community needs and voice, connect your team members to the local community with, where your offices are located, are mini labs for democracy, discourse, civic engagement, right? They tie your employees into your larger grant making strategy and employee giving programs and really, you know, teach employees about philanthropy. What does it mean to be a donor at the grassroots level? Next slide, please. Um, I'm going to talk really quickly about how do you start this, kind of like a little taste of what a giving circle is before I pass it over to Dennis to talk about established giving circle inside Cisco. A giving circle, a pop-up giving circle is a giving circle in 90 minutes to give your team a taste of what it means to be a philanthropic, what it means to be part of this collective giving experience together. And how you can do this is in different ways. Emily is going to talk to you a little bit too about it, but you get your um, team members to meet, to learn, to discuss, to pitch and vote, and vote and to celebrate. So you go through all the stages of a given circle, but everything in 90 minutes. And what we have seen in the past couple of years, next slide please, is how people from different companies have connected and created community in these pop-up experiences. Um, this is an example of a pop-up giving a circle that we had at Google during Black History Month, where uh, the, the uh, Black ERG at Google raised more than $30,000 to support a very small grassroots nonprofit organization in a cause that the group cared about. Um, next slide, please. Just some stats of what we have seen in the past um, year and a half. From April 2020 to December 2021, 
we have facilitated a few pop-up bidding circles that have raised close to a quarter of a million dollars for very small grassroots nonprofits, involving more than 540 participants and you know, tw uh, doing 21 experience. Uh, next slide, please. Um, this is an example of what you know pop-up giving circles uh, can can look like. Uh, you can tie your pop-up giving uh, circles experiences to the different celebrations across the year, or you can you know have your own company um, experiences or celebrations, or you know maybe it's the anniversary of your company and you can do a pop-up around that. What we have seen with this pop-up pop-up style. Um, to different uh, celebrations throughout the year is that companies may have um, fundraising campaigns going on at the same time, but the experience and you know the fast pace and the engagement of the giving circle experience have resulted in a lot more money raised, a lot more you know engagement from uh, team members and wanted to be more involved in philanthropy. But I'm going to stop right there because the whole idea, next slide please, and last slide, um, it's to give, after you give your employees a taste of what a giving circle could look like, then you establish a giving circle that is evergreen, that is year round in your uh, company. And I am so happy to have Dennis here to talk a little bit about the Cisco Conexión Latino Giving Circle inside Cisco Conexión de Latinx ERG that was started five years ago and it's a member of the Latino Giving Circle Network of the Latino Community Foundation based in San Francisco. Um, so if we can take the slides down, please, so um, Dennis and I can talk. Thank you. Um, Dennis, welcome. Uh, <laughs> so excited to have you here. It's like and, from your really living room to mine, yes. <laughs> yes, from our living rooms. Um, I just want to ask you if you could share a little bit with our audience um, about your giving circle. You know, how it got started, what was kind of the idea behind it, and what have you seen about, you know, the benefits of having a giving circle uh, with ARG? Yeah, thanks, Sarah, and, and thanks to Global Impact for uh, really sharing what we've been learning here about giving circles and other ways to communicate and, and really have a deeper connection with our local community and with our employees, our friends, our colleagues internally. You know, in the end, I think it's really about raising money for good causes because definitely society needs it. You know, if you read the literature today, fewer people are giving and there's more need in the world, as Scott mentioned, just the, the devastating impact of Ukraine. So. A brief history about my giving circle, but I'm going to make it more generic, you know, to say this, this can be applied to big companies, small companies, established companies, new companies. I think there's there's positive benefit for everyone here. So in 2017, Paul Segalini, who's a, who's a member of Cisco, uh, he had experience in a separate giving circle. And he came to me and he said, with someone else, they tag teamed me at lunch. They said, look, we've got an idea. We think we should have a giving circle here at Cisco. And, uh, and you're the guy to help us because you're the head of the Latino uh, Employee Resource Group. And so with that, okay, I heard the pitch, got excited about it, talked to some executive sponsors for our group. They got excited about it. We started planning events and we had a tremendous kickoff, you know, a, a large number of people, it was a celebration, it was a party, you know, all in the ruse of getting people to, you know, open up their wallets and their minds and to say, look, you know, I think we all care about an issue here. I think we're all in this together. And whoever would like to join us, let's continue, not as a one-time gift, but as a commitment to an issue, to a cause. And, you know, I, Cisco is in Silicon Valley, you know, so I kind of pitch it to my colleagues like a venture capital fund, except we're not out here to make the next self-driving car that flies in the air and collects, collects billions of dollars. I look at it this way, you know, we're starting a venture capital fund in our giving circle to really drive forward some social impact, some social cause that we feel very strongly about. So we create a thesis and we say one of the key problems in our community is this and we all debate on it. You know, everybody that joins the giving circle puts in some money 
everybody has equal voice regardless of your status in the company. So we had everybody from our CIO at the time down to you know a, a junior employee who just started at the company. Everybody gives them the same amount, has equal voice. And then we talk about what do we think are really the most challenging issues in our community? What, where would we like to make a difference? And so because we were built as a part of our Latinx employee resource group, and because we're based in San Jose, California, where 33% of the population is Latinx, what we wanted to do is we said, we want to help drive some improvement in the educational opportunities of our Latinx community, which are very underrepresented in terms of what resources they're able to attain. And so how do we do that? We want to not just give to big organizations, established organizations that may have some, some benefit out there in the local community. We picked small organizations that, that were really centered in neighborhoods, that really understood the people in that neighborhood. And, and by picking those small organizations that had direct communication, direct impact to the families that we wanted to help, we also had a deeper connection and understanding of what's going on in this neighborhood of San Jose, which is a, a huge city, by the way, it's like one and a half million people and geographically it's spread all over the place. And we could, we, could, we picked three different organizations to, to fund for uh, and to give grants to over the course of three or four years, the same three organizations, because we saw the improvements that they were making. And so it's such a benefit socially because I mean, in the sense of this, the community impact that you're making, uh, in the last five years, we've raised $80,000 in total to these small nonprofits whose total budget, you know, might be like 400,000, even less, $300,000 a year. And we see the numbers, you know, they're, they're part of the Valley, so they also track the data and they're able to show us, look, with your impact, with your giving, We've been able to reach X number of people and X number of families, and we've helped these people go to college and these people you know, do these things. So that, personally, it's very rewarding. From an employer standpoint, I'd say as well, you have another way of, of engaging employees. You know, people come to work and they want to do a good job, yes, but culture matters. And the kind of culture that a company has may mean the difference between somebody leaving it or not. It's made a difference to me and it's made a difference to a number of colleagues. And I won't say that the giving circle is the sole reason I stay at my company, but it's definitely one of the things that does keep me here because it, it tells me what kind of culture we have at the company, that it would support this kind of activity, this democratic process of being philanthropic, but being led by employees, not just by an established company foundation that says, hey, we've decided to give money to these small groups in these large quantities. You know, this is the other way around. And I think that's a real benefit to everybody, whether you're a, a, an, an established company that's, that's been around for decades, or even maybe even better in a smaller company that's maybe been around five, six years, really also understands that you don't just live in a community, you don't work in a community, you're part of that community. And if you're thinking about how do I create a social impact for my, for my uh, employees, for my company in a community, let the employees lead because they want to. You'll find those people to do it. I love that, Dennis. And I, I want to ask you something. Um, can you talk a little bit about the kind of the not very, you know, visible benefits of the of the um, giving circle, the things that you don't see at the beginning, but they're there. What about those like organic networking opportunities uh, within different areas of the company or, you know, organic or unofficial mentorship opportunities between people from different, you know, areas of your company? Yeah, Sarah, definitely one of the benefits we see here is you know, to, to make a company stronger, you always want your functional silos to break down and to really understand more about what other functions are doing. And you, you have in a formal environment, a matrixed environment where you have somebody reporting to multiple heads. You know, that, it, it, that has its benefits, but it also has its limitations. These kinds of 
informal organizations within a company add to this cross proliferation of ideas and understanding. So in the giving circle that I'm a part of, we had people from finance and from HR and from IT and from corporate strategy. I mean, it was a wide variety of people. And we got together, as I mentioned before, from all levels of the organization. And so we saw, you know, you get together for a giving circle. And this is honestly back in the days before, before the pandemic, when we would gather for lunch uh, at, the, at our campus. And so before we started the formal proceedings, people would talk and like, hey, what's going on in your area? What are you working on? And then you'd start to hear these conversations like, oh, I didn't know you were working on that. So am I. But from a different angle, different perspective. So there's definitely that ability to create new relationships that will benefit the business because you're talking to people about work and you're making connections in an unexpected way. But the mentorship opportunities, definitely I'm a personal beneficiary of this. There are a few others in our group too. Because we're there and we're talking with people at different levels in the company, I learned many things, not just in, in helping develop the Giving Circle, because our executive sponsors helped us. You know, they, they, they helped coach some of us about, well, how do we do this? How do we pitch this? How do we approach other executives to get involved? How do we broaden our reach across the company? What channels uh, might we have? Yeah. And uh, personally then establishing that relationship to get one-on-one -on -one coaching that professionally has helped me as well. So definitely, Sarah, it's, it's a great benefit. And another reason to consider a giving circle in your organization. Thank you, Dennis. And I know you and I could be talking about this for hours, uh, but we're going to pass it to, to Brittany and Marcy for the next part. And we're here for any questions. Please send us questions in the chat. And um, I'm glad uh, that you touch on so many things. Thank you, Dennis. Thanks, Sarah and Dennis. I think that was really incredible to hear and look forward to, to covering and diving more later in the Q&A. So I'm going to share a little bit on, on our work with Marcy on employee assistance programs. And so at Global Impact, we work with corporate clients in a number of different ways, anything from building and advising a corporate philanthropy strategy to supporting employee giving programs, disaster response and activation, and then employee assistance programs. This employee assistance programs have really been the biggest area of growth um, and we've seen a real increase in companies looking to establish or to enhance their employee assistance programs over the past, you know, really kind of two years. And everyone calls these programs something, something a little bit different. So today when I reference an employee assistance program or an EAP, I'm talking about a program that a company is offering where a company offers financial support to employees affected by natural disaster or for personal hardship. Our approach in working with these clients is to kind of start with that program assessment piece. Um, this is where we really build out a thorough framework that helps dictate those program parameters that the company is setting up. This includes things like what gets funding, what types of disasters are covered, at what amount. And then we do launch a donation platform and, or other means of supporting the program. Employee giving, for example. I think this is one of the uniquely important components when you consider this opportunity really as, as a broader way to support employee engagement. So we're gonna kind of dive in here a little bit. Once we launch the program and the online application, we also provide all the program administration. So reviewing applications and disbursement of funds. And so today I have one of our clients, uh, Marcy Passarello, Director of Global Citizenship at Pepsi, PepsiCo, to talk a little bit more about their program and how they really built it into their overall employee engagement strategy. So I'm going to turn things over to Marcy to share a little bit on, on their program, and then we'll, we'll go back and forth with some questions. Thanks, Brittany. Appreciate it. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today. Um, PepsiCo, I guess... PepsiCo's employee assistance program is called PEP Help, um, and it actually originated in response to Hurricane Sandy here in the U.S. Um, I want to say it was 2012, but don't, it's a long time ago now. Um, and at that time, um, employee, there was, we're headquartered in New York, and so there was a significant impact on the eastern seaboard, and employees were really interested in trying to understand how they could help other employees who had been impacted 
so sort of from those conversations, we explored um, you know, how we could actually do that um, in an effective way. And we launched PEP Help um, sort of following that. In the time since then, and our program today is um, has been designed, it's strictly implemented in the US um, and in response to natural disaster. And so, um, as Brittany mentioned, there are lots of other ways that these programs can be utilized. Um, we're a global company in over 200 countries, and so our employee base is massive. And so, at least at the start, you know, it was done in a, in a somewhat limited way, although, you know, more than half of our employees are in the U.S. Um, and so, since that time, the number of disasters, we, we did not really experience um, disasters in the U.S. to that magnitude, where a very concentrated geography with a high number of our employees um, were impacted, until um, February of 2021, where you may recall massive ice storms that had occurred um, across Texas. And we have a very large um, employee footprint in that geography. So that was really the while we responded to disasters in the time frame from 2012 to now, um, in those instances it was much smaller in terms of magnitude. Um, but in the case of the ice storms in Texas, um, there were over 700 employees of PepsiCo that were impacted by those disasters in a meaningful by that weather in a meaningful way. And so this um, this program really allowed us to um, you know, both provide help to our employees and also provide our employees who were not living in Texas at the time, the ability to sort of um, support um, their, their colleagues um, who were significantly impacted. Um, the other comment that I would make is I think that the program really is a reinforcement of sort of our company culture and our collective aspirations, you know, to be stronger, to do better. Um, and so it's one example of way in which we do that. Yeah, that's great. And I think provides really good context to kind of think about how employee giving program, employee assistance programs are launched. Can you talk a little bit about some of the kind of central program objectives and then what your call to action is when a disaster happens? Yeah, that's, that's great, Brittany. Thank you. And so I think, you know, the primary purpose of the program is to provide um, support to employees in need and to allow our employees to participate in that process. Um, our funding is not solely from employees. You know, the, our foundation, which is, which is the funding source for the program, also provides support, um, but it doesn't provide a vehicle for that. Um, we think about it in terms of disaster. Um, it's a component of our disaster strategy. So generally speaking, when PepsiCo is responding to disaster, we sort of look at it um, in four primary ways. One is sort of traditional cash giving and grant making that we do with nonprofits that are working on the ground in the site of the disaster. Um, and that's typically funding that's provided either by our foundation or from the business. Um, the second um, sort of prong is around product donations. And so very often in response to disasters, things like water and other products that PepsiCo provides are particularly useful. Um, and so we, we, we support disasters, um, product donations. And then the third is what I would say is employee engagement. Um, and that may include volunteerism, depending on the extent of the disaster and our ability to actually, you know, volunteer on the ground in those locations. Will include employee cash giving, so we will often highlight um, the philanthropic partners that we're working with on the grounds in those geographies and allow employees to actually donate money, um, and then have that money matched by our foundation to those nonprofits. And then the third is the EAP, where we use it as, as sort of a call to action. It allows employees to donate to the EAP and for us to sort of highlight the EAP at that moment in time. And then to the extent that it is in the US and we have employees that are impacted by the disaster, 
It also allows employees who are in need to actually tap into the program. Yeah, I think that's such a central component of, you know, really offering support across the company. So giving opportunity for those that are affected, but it also kind of gives an outlet for those to support each other and really build that community within within that within the company, build the culture within the company of caring for one another and connecting to, you know, connecting to each other. What are some of the core kind of best practices or advice you might have for others when they're, you know, looking at launching a program or they're looking at, uh, you know, building that program more as a part of their employee engagement strategy? Yeah, that's great. I So, so a couple of things. Um, our program is led through the team that manages our foundation. Um, a critical element to the success of the program is connectivity to HR. So the only way employees really know about the program, um, particularly as it relates to needing to access it to receive support, is primarily through human resources. And we activate at the time of the disaster. So there's information available about the availability of the program you know, in general, but our true activation um, is when an actual disaster happens and really HR is our connectivity to those employees in need and bringing them to the program. And so I think there are different organizations that house these programs in different places. For us, it works well this way, but it really is a, is a a joint effort. The program would not be successful without the connectivity into HR. Um, the second comment I would make is I think it's helpful to be planful and sort of think about it up front. So as I mentioned, you know, our program is specific to the U.S. We have had conversations on and off about should we be expanding it outside the U.S. Um, had, and had not really made a commitment to do that. You know, now, given the tragedy in Ukraine, all of a sudden everybody wants to be able to help employees who are impacted in Ukraine. And while it's more turnkey for us in the U.S., like if we wanted to expand the criteria beyond natural disaster in the U.S., that's a relatively easy thing to do. Standing up a program to operate outside the U.S. is a bigger um, challenge. And so we're leveraging this opportunity to talk about Ukraine to both think about, is there something we can do in that instance? And also how do we do it in such a way that would allow us to do things outside the US a little bit more turnkey. So I think the more planful you can be, the better. Yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, as you mentioned, within, within companies, these programs sit all over the place. So within our clients, some of them sit within HR, some of them fit within the corporate foundation or just their employee giving unit. Uh, and you know what I notice about all those is regardless, at one point, we are all meeting together. So whether it sits in HR, we're often bringing on, bringing on people from the foundation team to help support and talk about how the program is funded, how you can ask employees to give, are you able to match to, to match people's gifts um, that when they're giving to the employee assistance program, all of those components. So kind of having that integrated working group is one of, I think, those key best practices that we certainly see with our clients. And I think to echo what you said about having something ready, you know, it sounds like that was a lot of your origin story as well. It was once you had it ready, you were able to mobilize when you needed to. And I think that's what we heard the most these past two years when the pandemic hit and people didn't have anything established, there was this urgency to figure out how to support employees and how to get money out the door um, and to identify what kind of assistance was needed. And so, you know, using these, these moments in time, whether it be COVID, whether it be the situation in Ukraine, or even just the acknowledgement of the number of disasters we are having currently with, with climate and environment issues, you know, we, it, it propels us and propels companies that this is something you have to think about. Um, and having a plan in place is what allows you to, to launch and activate when the time comes. And it might not be immediate, but you know, making sure that you have something in the works is, is of course easier to launch uh, and to launch more quickly. So a little bit about your, your program, kind of program funding and the employee giving side of things. Do you set goals or how, um, 
what are some of the strategies that, that you've found to help increase that employee support? Yeah, so I think I think that continues to be an opportunity area for us. You know, when the program was originally envisioned, I think the thought was the foundation would provide some seed capital and the employees' donations would sort of continue to fund it ongoingly. And what we found for two reasons is one is the supply, you know, what we need to demand is greater than the supply, right? So so when it when issues happen, there's a higher degree of need by employees than necessarily there are employees who are able or willing to give. Um, in addition, I think that we have a, you know, an opportunity to continue to communicate better and more effectively around this is an opportunity as a place where people can give. So we do, as I mentioned, we, we explicitly activate it when disasters occur um, because there is sort of a call to action at that moment in time. Um, I think there are opportunities for us to, um, to do more of that. The other thing that I would say is we do, um, we, our foundation does match donations that employees make to this fund. And so we do, we do an annual sort, sort of cash giving campaign. Our matching gift program is operational all year round, but we do sort of do a highlighted focused campaign in the month of October. And we do highlight this charity at that, you know, we do highlight this fund at that point in time as, you know, an opportunity for people to give. I also think that if we make the program more global in scope, that will also help us. We'll have obviously more things that we'll need to pay out, but it'll also help us with, um, with donating because um, employees outside the U.S. will likely have a greater interest. Definitely. Um, so we'll go ahead and wrap up, but I'll leave with one last question, then we'll turn things over to Emily at Grapevine. Um, do you have just kind of any, any anecdotes from employees? What is some of the reaction that you've gotten from these programs, either from someone who's received assistance or someone who's, you know, you know had the opportunity to give to another employee during this time? Um, we'll, we'll leave those with, leave with that. Yeah, thanks, Brittany. I think the main thing is, is we often get you know, emails, letters, and notes from people. It's generally from the people who are receiving funding, um, sort of being immensely appreciative of our ability to, number one, both provide the money. And, and candidly, our grants are not that high, right? It's $1,000 or $2,500, depending on the extent of your situation. Um, but that $1,000 or $2,500 is immensely meaningful the individual that's receiving it and the fact that we can generally turn the money around very quickly. So while they're waiting for insurance companies and adjusters and other things to happen that will you know, hopefully make other funding available to them, our money is, is relatively quick to get there. And so it's generally just really heartwarming notes from people at very difficult times about how much they appreciate the fact that this is something that the company can do for them. Great, thank you so much, Marcy. And Emily, I'm gonna kick things over to you to lead us in some of our opportunities to take action. If you're interested in setting up these programs at your, at your company, here are some great resources for you to be able to do so. Great, thanks, Brittany. Um, so I'm thrilled to kick off this next part of our session on taking action. I hope you are all inspired by some of the examples you just heard. Um, and I want you to know that if you are inspired to start a giving circle or a giving circle program at your company, we're here to help. Um, so I am the founder and CEO of Grapevine. Uh, we're at grapevine.org and we are an all-in-one technology solution for your giving circle program. Uh, so. We're here to help you engage your employees and demonstrate real measurable social impact with your workplace, your DEI, or your ERG giving circle. Um, and we are a free, uh, easy to use platform where members can come and start a new group page to start a giving circle, invite members into that circle, collect donations into a shared charitable fund, um, uh, receive those charitable donation receipts, and ultimately collaborate around deciding where that money goes through nonprofit nomination features, voting features, um, and ultimately um, grant that money out to a selected nonprofit. And 
if if the case uh, um, requires it or enables it, um, repeat that. So a lot of giving circles do happen, as Dennis and Sada talked about earlier, over and over again. So these are about ongoing recurring granting cycles. So we are this easy all-in-one solution that enables that. You can think of us as like the first crowd granting platform uh, as opposed to crowdfunding, right? So we're more about community, connection, collaboration, and recurring giving. We also work well um, with existing uh, giving platforms. So if you're using Benevity or some other tool, um, we integrate and um, are quite a flexible solution for you. So I'm happy to work with you wherever you are at. Um, next slide, please. Just wanted to highlight, we have moved over $10 million now in donations from hundreds of giving circles across the platform, supported more than 1,200 small local nonprofits largely across the country. Um, so just a few stats here about us and the work that we've done. We've created these giving circles, supported these uh, donors uh, within companies and beyond. So we're just part of the broader giving circle movement, whether it's neighbors coming together or a company employees. So it really is a bigger movement that we're a part of and community that we're building at Great Guide. Next slide, please. So here are just a few of the companies that we've worked with uh, for their giving circle programs. And I wanna highlight just three different uh, models or approaches that we've taken with these companies to support their work, to give you an idea of how this model might work for you. So if we go to the next slide, this first one is really what Sada and Dennis talked about earlier, and it's this company or partner-led giving circle, right? So here's an example where Philanthropy Together, Sada's organization, um, uh, partnered with Giphy and with us to facilitate a pop-up giving circle for their employees. Uh, so a really nice event where we were able to support on the technology side, make it really easy for employees to participate um, and actually facilitate those donations and move those funds in a quick 90-minute pop-up event. Um, so this is a really nice way that we can partner with uh, a Philanthropy Together or some other programmatic um, partner, Global Impact, et cetera, to really create a bigger, more robust giving circle experience and educational experience um, and event for your employees. The second example, if we go to the next slide, is a little bit different. This is an ERG or team-led giving circle. So what we're seeing at Grapevine is a lot of these smaller teams or ERGs within companies getting excited about setting up giving circles to support their work, right? And so in this case, if um, you have an ERG program or other teams where this could make sense, we would work directly with that ERG or team leader and really support him or her to start a giving circle for their group um, and even support them in mapping out the model that makes sense for them um, and help them with collecting those donations, um, even facilitating an event with them for their group where members can learn about nonprofits and causes and vote or just go ahead and host that asynchronously on the platform to keep it really light and easy for them. And we'll handle all of the tracking of funds and impact um, tracking and more. So this is a nice way for you to share this model with your broader teams and give them the power to be leaders for their specific groups within your company. Um, the last model I just wanna quickly share with you is this third model, which is probably the lightest weight version, which is really, if you said we wanna start a giving circle, but we don't have the bandwidth or the time to do a bigger event. Um, our ERG leaders don't have the time to set up their own, or maybe we don't have ERG programs yet, but we'd like to do something. Well, this is the lightest weight version where if you just set up essentially a group channel in your Slack or some other um, communication vehicle within your company, whether it's a portal or email channel, um, and invite those members, invite those um, team members to join the company giving circle, Grapevine has automated so much of this whole process that we can essentially run this giving circle for you in this very light um, asynchronous way or help you host a virtual giving circle event um, as part of that on a quarterly basis. So these are um, uh, just three of the options that we have, a much more robust educational experience with some really knowledgeable partners who can bring in speakers. The first case we talked about, the second one really bringing this tool to your ERG and DEI, other team leaders um, to implement with their individual teams. And the third one being this lighter weight um, version, which 
some companies like, because it's a little more similar to maybe a one-time campaign or something like that, where they can push it out to their employees, but uh, they don't have to necessarily run it in as robust a way in a recurring manner. So I hope that gives you a few examples of how you can think about this model within your company. Um, some great resources here, and I'll follow up with some more um, in the email that goes out shortly. Um, but I think with that, I will leave it there and, and um, pass it back to you, Brittany. Um, hi, um, Emily. No, it's to me. I just wanted to chime in on what Emily um, is saying. And yes, if you think about these three different ideas, they are also, you know, building blocks, right? Um, give that first experience uh, where you are engaging and creating the awareness with your team members and then, you know, empower them to follow through. So um, just wanted to, to say that and we are here, you know, Global Impact, we're buying philanthropy together. Um, for you to help uh, to help you get started. And pass it to Brittany. So we will have an email going out shortly after this this webinar concludes that will include some additional resources from all of us, um, and we'll also have a, sum a summary article of today's discussion that will arrive in your inbox. Um, this is great if you want to share it with other colleagues who you think might find this conversation helpful or or maybe it inspired you to consider one of these ideas as a way to engage your employees. I also wanted to mention, given the you know, current circumstance in Ukraine, um, Global Impact has launched a Ukraine response fund, and we are working with many nonprofit partners that are on the on the ground and supporting these affected communities. So whether you're looking for a list of organizations that are responding in Ukraine, looking for a way to mobilize your employees to respond to Ukraine or have corporate giving dollars that you're looking to um, grant out to great organizations, we're happy to help. We're gonna go ahead and turn to questions. Um, and while I wait for those to come in, we'll quickly say thank you for joining. Um, and feel free to connect with us afterwards. And I'll invite all the panelists to, to join back on video and mute. And the one question that we did get earlier in today's chat was around what do we mean by, by philanthropy? Um, and so Sarah provided, or Sarah provided a great answer in the, the chat, but wanted to see if anyone else wanted to, to chime in on that as well. I'll say for, for myself and I think for Global Impact, you know, we definitely see philanthropy as more of that broad definition of any opportunity or any way there is for you to give back. And so even in the instance of employee giving, it is a way of, of showing your care for, for one another. And so we would even call that a form of a form of philanthropy. So, you know, it's it's really an, an all-encompassing topic, but there certainly are many different areas and caveats to, to that topic and certainly one that we'd love to, to explore more and hear other thoughts on. Yeah, I'd like to jump in, Brittany and Phil. I'm with you 100%. Um, you mentioned you know, you, in your mind, philanthropy is giving money to solve a cause or some social problem rather than, let's say, putting a Band-Aid on a wound. And uh, from a giving circle perspective, you know, this is open to any giving circle and, and how you define it, but that was our inspiration too, that we want to be more philanthropic and drive at root causes. And so one of the benefits of, of joining in a giving circle is that the circle learns together. You know, once we've talked a little bit about what is meaningful for us, we don't just leave it to our own devices to try and like pick a charity out of the air and then you know fund fund a program or two. What we want to do is begin to share resources, begin to share knowledge, data, articles, events like today, you know, with each other and and then bring in experts. And this is where folks like philanthropy together and and other local organizations that you may get involved in in the giving circle will help because they can come in and share perspectives, different points of view. And, and in, our, in my case, it was a lot of data that I was not aware of to help us drive at, well, what do we think are some root causes where we can make an influence, or where we can make a difference? And, and so right there with you, yes, we'd love to address some of the causes of social problems and not just some of the 
some of the um, negative side effects of those root causes. Dennis, just to add to, to your comments and uh, Sara's as well, uh, this whole notion of ties, time, talent, treasury, and testimony, I think is fantastic because what we've all learned in the last two years is that all of us want to feel connected to those areas in our philanthropy. We don't want to just give charity. We really want to make a difference. And I think when you think about your corporate culture, these two initiatives really speak to that holistic approach of strategic philanthropy. A giving circle gives employees a chance to really use their value, and use their knowledge, um, and vice versa, an employee assistance program gives employees and team members to help other team members in real life situations. So I really wanna encourage everyone today to think about how you're connecting to the whole of your employee, because if you're doing that, then you're connecting to their philanthropy. Thanks, Scott. One of the other questions we got um, is around what's next for your programs. Um, so I know Marcy shared a little bit on hers. Um, Dennis, do you have, have anything you want to share on what's next for, for you all? Well, definitely it's, uh, it's always evolving because of the situations that we see in the world today. I mean, our, our giving circle initially started as being very focused in, in uh, STEM education because we are a technology company in the Bay Area, specifically in San Jose, and we were looking specifically there. With the murder of George Floyd, we expanded a little more and we became part of a, a broader effort across the company to fund social impact, um, social justice programs. And so we started to band together with other employee resource groups as well. And as an example, you know, I began to learn about um, uh, about the Equal Justice Initiative, about the Southern Poverty Law Center. And, and again, that, that's, I think that's a big benefit of the Giving Circle is that expansion of awareness you learn together. Now um, with COVID, you know, we pivoted again and said our funding priorities have to change to reflect what is, what is current. And in, for, for our particular circumstance, you know, we, we care about what's happening in the Latino community. And that we, we know as Spanish speakers, there was a lot of misinformation in Spanish media. Uh, where people were saying, well, don't get the vaccine because the, the government's going to implant a chip in you so they can trace and deport you. Uh, and that was causing low vaccination rates. One of, the, one of the reasons why we were seeing low vaccination rates. So it's an example of pivoting to meet the moment. And, you know, at this point, we're again reassessing, well, things are trending a little bit better uh, with COVID. So where do we go from here? You know, and, and that is something that now we are planning to discuss as a giving circle in March. So we've got a, a meeting on the calendar to say, all right, it's giving circle two years post the pandemic. Do we continue with COVID funding or do uh, COVID relief or do we pivot to something else? Do we go back to what we originally started in STEM education or is there something deeper here that we should look at? I've got my idea and I'm ready to pitch to my circle, but Beyond that, it's, it's also, Brittany, a matter of how do you continue to engage and broaden the awareness across the company, if not to have people join my circle, at least to inspire and to say, oh, a giving circle, I have an idea. I can create a giving circle for something that's important to me, even if I don't particularly share you know, this giving circle's area of interest, but there's still opportunity there and it benefits everybody. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And I think your idea of evolving to the times and being adaptable is incredibly important. And I think is something that we see right now with the Ukraine crisis. You know, some, some employee assistance programs are able and built for that kind of crisis and others are not. So, you know, think that's something that we definitely take into account in some of the frameworks that we develop of just the evolution of, of what may come in the future. It's, it's certainly hard to predict, but important to, to be able to adapt and be nimble for. All right, well, we'll go ahead and wrap up. Thank you all again for joining and thank you so much to our panelists for sharing and inspiring all of us. We are incredibly grateful. Um, and as I mentioned, you'll receive a follow-up email and feel free to reach out if you'd like to get connected to any of our panelists or have questions for them.
Thanks and have a great day.